Hi there, my name is Marcin and in today's video I'm going to show you exactly how selective color in Photoshop works. You will know how does it affect your image and also what is the theory behind selective color adjustment layer. Before we start, on the important note, if you are someone interested in retouching, make sure you check the links in the description, check my retouching portfolio, check my website with professional retouching courses, and also hit the like button on this video. You don't have to do it right now, but if you finish watching this video, if you think it was helpful, give me a like, it does help. To help us understand how selective color works, as always I prepared something special and in this case we have this color wheel with all of the primary colors, all of the secondary colors and also some more and different shades. So let's start, let's open selective color adjustment layer and first thing I want to be focused is the mode that we are working with. So as you know, most of the things that we do in Photoshop, we do in RGB mode, that stands for red, green, and blue light, that connected together give us the final result in form of the picture or in form of the graphic. Here, we don't really have RGB mode, but we have reversion of RGB mode, that is CMYK, that stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key which is black. The best way to understand this is understanding this as reversion of RGB. So idea is the same, but everything else works in reversion. So this is the first thing when it comes to the slider. Other thing, we can choose the colors existing on the image. So for example, if we choose color red, it will locate the red pixels existing on the image and will be manipulating the light on this existing area. In this case, that would be red. We can predict that will affect the red colors. Probably it will affect the oranges quite strongly because orange color is the mix of yellow and red. So half of this, should be the reds, also maybe a little bit of magenta, but we will see. So we have some other colors, we have reds, yellows, greens, cyan, blues, many others. So we can selectively work on these different areas of the image. Also, we can work on the whites, neutrals, which is 50% gray, and blacks. So let's start and let's start with the reds, it will be easy, let's let's go for it. So when it comes to the reds, remember idea behind this, always opposite. So if I want to intensify the reds by increasing the red light, I start with cyan, which is opposite to red, and I will not increase this, but I go opposite, and going opposite will increase the red light. If I will add the value, what is happening here, I'm actually not adding cyan, but I'm decreasing the red light. And what happens, as you can see, in the pure red, we got complete darkness. Over here, we got gray. And over here, as you can see, we did not took away whole color because we still have some other shade, probably. So going back to zero, we can also manipulate with the different sliders. So now we'll be manipulating with the magenta on the reds. Remember the primary for magenta will be green. So let's see if we have some of this. And as you can see by adjusting this slider, we are changing the color. Why? If I go opposite, it means I'm adding the green light to the red pixels. If I will be increasing magenta, it means I'm taking away the green light from the red pixels and going down to yellow. If I decrease it, it means I'm adding blue light to the red pixels. If I will increase this, it means I'm taking away the blue light from the red pixels. Let's go down to the black and to prove we work in opposition, of course, I'm taking away black, I'm getting complete brightness. Because as we remember, 
red, green and blue with 100% intensity gives us complete brightness, which is white. If we take away all of these lights, we receive complete darkness. And these results can be also achieved not only by dragging this black to 100%, but also if we move these three sliders to 100%, we get the same result as black at 100%. And to achieve complete brightness, we will go opposite and we get complete brightness. And the same idea will be with all of the other colors. So let's go to yellows now. And as you can see, we can do the same. So let's add red light to yellows, take away. Let's add green light to yellows or take away green light. And let's add blue light or take away blue light. And as you can see, if we add blue light to 100% intensity, we get this bright. Of course, with the black, it will work the same. And we can do this thing with all of the colors we have here. So I'm going to switch to some other colors. Let's see how it will react to the blacks, because as you can see, we, we have some of the black pixels here. So let's manipulate with this. And you can see the same effects on the black. So if I'm adding the red light to the blacks, it's getting filled with the red. If I take away magenta, which means adding green light to blacks, it gets filled with green and then blue, of course. And also if I take away black for from black, it will become white. Of course, for the whites, the results will be opposite, but let's do one more experiment with neutrals. And maybe for the neutrals, I'm going to create the gray color below my image. So let's give 50% gray and drag it on the bottom. And let's try with neutrals. So if I take away cyan or rather add red light to the image, as you can see, the background get filled with the red that was gray. And also the other colors change its values because this is neutral and we have a lot of gray in the other colors, especially when you look at the cyan, what happened here, it become gray. Because if we add the red light to the cyan pixels, they are neutralized and become gray. If I will do similar experiment with magenta now, as you can see this time magenta become gray because I added the green light. I can do both and if I take away yellow, as you can see, now I have completely different colors. And why is that? Why our magenta is different color and why our yellow here did not change the color at all. So the reason for yellow is it's brighter than this shade of gray. So it wasn't affected when it comes to magenta. As you remember, we don't take away the lights, we add the lights. So at this moment, we have the mix of green and blue. And this is the result of this mix that we have on the image. So let's go back to zero. And one more thing we have to explain we one and one more thing i have to talk about is the fact that it's the lights how can i prove that this is the lights and not the colors how can i prove that by taking down the values i'm adding the values as i claim so let me look at these darker colors. It's natural that the cold colors will be a little bit darker. So I'm going to choose magentas maybe. Let me add some of this value here, just like this. So I took down two values. What else I can do? I can go to the blue 
and do it this way. And now to prove you that I added light and not take it away, I'm going to change the blending mode from normal to luminosity that will be affecting only the light. And as you can see in this result, this part of the image become brighter. Why? Because I added the light. One last very important thing is these two options that we have on the bottom, absolute and relative. So far we did everything with absolute and the idea is pretty simple. If we take away the red light, we take away the red light. If we take away the red light from 100% intensity red, we end up with black, with complete darkness. Though when we work with relative, the effect is much more settled and what's very important, it doesn't have effect on the color with complete brightness. So for example, I have complete brightness of the red here. And as you can see, there is no effect on this. And of course, the effect on the other shades of red is less than with absolute. So it's much more settled. Let's try the blue when we have complete intensity of the blue in the middle as well. And we'll have the same effect going with absolute, get dark with relative no effect. But when I look at the cyan, this cyan doesn't have 100% intensity, so we can test the cyan, which is of course secondary, so this time we won't be manipulating with this slider, but to other sliders. And as you can see, it has effect in the middle because the cyan wasn't at pure intensity. The other example of secondary color will be yellow here that actually has pure intensity. So going with yellow, absolute. And as you can see, I can achieve complete darkness with relative no effect. So this last part could be a little bit complicated, but it's crucial to understand how selective color work. So let's move to the image and do something here. Uh, something very settled when it comes to work on the images. I don't think going extreme is good. So let's choose selective color and starting, for example, uh, with the reds. I'm going with absolute to have stronger effect. Uh, I can take away some of the red light. So I will make overall image a little bit darker. If I want to bust these colder colors, I could go, for example, to the greens here and increase the green light. And also I could go to cyan and I could try to increase the cyan this time by manipulating with these two other sliders. So adding green light and blue light in this case. To confirm that we change the lights on this image, we can always change blending mode to luminosity. And what's important, if we don't want to affect the lights, we can always change blending mode to color. And then there will be no effect on the lights, but just we will be able to see changes in intensity of the color. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this video clarifies some things how we work with selective colors. So now we know we do not manipulate with the colors. We actually do manipulate with the lights. Change the lights and you will end up with completely different colors.